Uh, so hi everybody, we're back again for um, the second video that I'll be giving on uh, the use of Open Studio and Honeybee inside of Grasshopper. And uh, you can see that uh, if you watch the first video, <clears throat> that I've added a couple new components up here. Uh, the purpose of this video is to really talk about the basics of airside modeling. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about extending this um, air handler uh, detail component, which uh, the use of the word air handler is semantics, really. Uh, it could be just a really basic air conditioner that plugs into your wall, which technically isn't an air handler. Uh, they might call that an air conditioner or through the wall air conditioner, but um, just to keep things simple, it's all the same thing in um, in a honeybee, or at least the way that we've made it now. So um, the uh, <coughs> the airside kind of covers all of these different um, types of devices. So air handlers and air conditioners, I kind of mentioned semantically. Uh, they're different. Air conditioners usually refer to smaller things, and air handlers tend to refer to large roof-mounted things. Um, but they both do the same thing. They, they have fans in them. Um, there's coils, and typically those, there's a cooling coil and a heating coil. Um, you might have an airside economizer. Um, and um, But these other things that don't really condition the building per se are kind of services um, like exhaust systems can also be considered part of the air side um, and then you know you have these kind of specialty um, notions or things we kind of tend to forget about when we think of the air side and so like terminals and diffusers technically belong on the air side right they're just at the end of the, the chain and natural ventilation is a window provided air handling with no fans. So um, all of these things are airside. I'm not going to talk about all of these today because I'm trying to keep each video to just about 10 or 15 minutes, but we'll get there. And then on the water side, um, you've got things like chillers and boilers and heat pumps and cooling towers and also things like geothermal wells and lakes and ponds and any other kind of free uh, sources of energy that you can get from the environment. I would say, I mean, if it's wet, it's the water side. Pretty simple. I mean, it's about as simple as it gets. We'll be talking about the beginnings of the air side today. Um, so what I just thought it'd be good just to kind of give you a brief overview of what makes this integration with Open Studio special and how it's different than the way that um, Honeybee might be used with Energy Plus right now. So... Um, I think I described a little bit in the earlier <laughs> um, video in lecture one that um, what Honeybee does, which is so great, is when a user draws a series of closed uh, B reps, um, Honeybee is able to take all the vertices and the surfaces that are associated with each of those closed B reps and it preps it, uh, meaning that um, it's taking those raw vertices and turning them into something that energy modeling can understand. So it knows, it, it basically preps the model so that a surface that's actually not uh, an interior wall is not an interior wall. Or to put it another way, it knows really what all the surfaces are. It knows whether it's interior or exterior. It knows whether it's a floor or a ceiling. It knows whether it's a wall. So it, it does all that prepping. And the other thing that Honeybee does is it attributes. So you can say, I want all my walls to be R15, and I want all my windows to be, you know, have a shading coefficient of 0.2. I want zone number one to be an office. I want zone number two to be um, a, a laboratory, you know, whatever you want. So it's preps and attributes. And, um, you know, Mustafa and Chris have given quite a few videos on those. So after that prepping and attributing, um, we jump we can jump into Open Studio, and that's really the bridge uh, that that I've been working on. And um, so to kind of put that into pers perspective, um, you know, here's all the geometry building, here's all the prepping and attributing, and you can do a lot of prepping and attributing in um, in Honeybee. 
And then pretty much, yeah, right here is our link over to Open Studio. And you know, there's a sort of a series of, 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 of upstream components that can be hooked in. So this is where that link occurs, just so you can see it physically. Yeah, oh, I'm kind of giving away my. Uh... So there's Open Studio there, and the two things that the magic of Open Studio really is, um, once those zones are are plugged into those components, uh, Open Studio does something that, for a long time, has made uh, Energy Plus pretty hard to use. It it automatically sets up the zoning of the air side and the water side, and I'll talk about that in a second. And then the other thing is that it properly connects the equipment together. So, um, and this is something that has been a tricky thing in Energy Plus in the past. And you know, I'd like to thank the, the Department of Energy and National Renewable Energy Lab and Kyle, who you know played a big part as well, along with a lot of other people in making it happen. But yeah, these two things are, are key. So when we, when we throw these zones over here and plug them in, so for example, this is four zone model and uh, you know, here's just a very simple 2d diagram of the four zones so what what open studio does is if you specify system type 5 like I'm using for this example open studio says okay I know that I need a central air handler and then it automatically builds all the branches to each one of the zones and then it also even builds uh, all the terminal devices uh, my video is cutting off the, the arrows on zone three and four, so um, you'll have to trust me there. Maybe I can move this down a little bit. Um, so yeah, it, it automatically sets up those zones for you. And and whatever zones you plug in, it will automatically zone them this way. Um, in addition, uh, system type five also has a boiler, and it will automatically put a, bo uh, a boiler in the system, it will automatically put a heating coil uh, in the air handling unit, and then it will also put in um, relief coils in each one of the zones automatically, and it will automatically connect them. So, I mean, that's um, that turns out to be a bit of magic that is um, not that easy to do in Energy Plus if you're doing it without an interface. It's pretty much impossible, I think. And the other thing too is that it now gives you a more accurate read on what's really happening inside the building because, you know, the dynamics of reheat are pretty complicated. If, just as an example, hospitals, uh, a good portion of their energy goes to reheat energy because it ends up being a, a waste. So we're actually able to model the, the HVAC system with more fidelity. Now, if you had chosen a different system, Open Studio would also be able to zone it appropriately. I won't talk about that too much because I, I want us to save time. So, um, you know, since this is just an intro, I wanted to, to just talk to you a little bit about some of the airside components and how they work together. So I would mentioned in the first video that um, there's filtration that goes on upstream. So we don't want to push into the Open Studio component bad um, configurations. So I'd mentioned that the system choice that you select, um, the upstream components will use logic to try and filter out things that are bad. Uh, some people had asked me to show what these different system types are. And so here's ASHRAE uh, 90.1 um, 2007, and it didn't change in 2010 for League version 4. So here you can see, you can take a screenshot here of the, the eight different system types that uh, we're currently uh, modeling inside of Honeybee. The last two are just heating only systems uh, and they're pretty straightforward to understand. So that's just for you. Um, so the what the filtration systems do is they make sure that um, there's not a bad assignment. The, the air handling unit is, is, is sort of an orchestrator, so to speak. So system type five is made up of a um, of a variable speed fan with a packaged um, direct expansion system inside of it. So it doesn't use water cooling. It doesn't use a chiller. Um, so 
when we uh, pull down a fan component, like, and you can see all the different components you can add here. So if we pull down a fan, a fan component like this one, and I'll, I'll just start from scratch. Um, the fan component will ask for a name, and it will ask for a fan type. Okay, and that's all you really need. But you can also provide a fan efficiency, which is you know between zero and one is basically the blade efficiency and the motor efficiency, the pressure drop of the system, and you can specify a motor efficiency as well. Excuse me, that's separate from the fan efficiency, and some other things. And here you can specify the the fan curve coefficients. Then you plug this into um, the fan detail here. You'll see that it turns um, yellow. And if I uh, attach a panel, you'll see a warning here. And that warning will basically tell you uh, hey, uh, you've specified a constant volume fan for a system that's variable volume. So the, the coordinator knows that um, packaged VAV with reheat requires a variable speed fan. and We can change that here at the fan type. So if we change this to 1, so you can only select two settings for variable speed versus constant speed. You'll see that problem goes away. Um, similarly, on the DX coil side, you know, if we wanted to make changes to the DX coil, uh, system type 5 is a has a two-speed coil in there. It's it's not a, a single-speed coil. So if we come up to um, the uh, cooling coil component, we drop one in, and we'll start from scratch here again. Okay, so these components upstream always kind of need a, a type and a name in order to be active. So again, a, a, a 1 means a 2 speed, and a 0 means a 1 speed. So if we had changed this to a 0, and then we had um, plugged this into the cooling coil, we're going to see a similar kind of warning there. You know, your cooling coil has been converted to a, a default 2 speed coil, <coughs> you know, because the package VAV is expecting a 2 speed. Now, uh, you know, this component will automatically replace it, and it won't break your um, your simulation, so you'll still be able to run without any problems. But uh, yeah, you should be you should be aware that that's going to happen. So if you change it back to two speed, you're no you're no worries there. Okay, so just a couple a couple last points. Um, so. You know, maybe we want to do a, a high-rated COP of five. And maybe we want to do a low-rated COP of uh, 3.5. And you can specify total airflow rate, total cooling. You know, anytime you see these sizing things, so this is getting a little bit, COP is pretty simple, but anytime you, you start seeing like airflow rate, total cooling. These are sizing routines. You know, I'm, I'll give a different presentation on how to use these, but most of the time they're going to be auto sized. So I would say, you know, you can leave all these airflow rate, cooling, and heat ratios alone. Um, oh, and, and you, you're also allowed to pick a condenser type. So if you pick a condenser type equal to one, um, this component, it will actually um, think that this is an evaporatively cooled condenser, which again is kind of a esoteric topic. But you'll see here, it's like saying, hey, you've specified an evaporatively cooled system, right? You better give me one, otherwise we'll assume your coil is going to be air cooled. So I can talk about that in a different demo. But you can play around with that. The evaporative cooler is uh, right here. And you can specify these conditions. And if you ever really want to understand more about these variables, uh, we've tried to 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 call out um, pretty well uh, what's going on. But it, you know, you can always look up in the Energy Plus documentation for more information if you'd like more.
And, um, you know, we can also specify a pressure rise here. Um, there's defaults in there that are pretty, pretty decent. It's in Pascal's. So, you know, um, I'll, I'll, I'll make a component for you guys. Uh, so that we can convert from pascals to inches and make that available in a future um, demo. And we can specify the motor efficiency here. And we can specify the fan efficiency. Okay, a couple more points I wanted to make. Um, we do our best right now to um, make these as idiot proof as possible, but you know, we don't do really serious error checking right now. So, you know, like the fan type, for example, can only accept a value of zero and one. If you put in a value of 10 or you put in a string or you try and plug some random component in there, I can't guarantee, I mean, it might crash and uh, the, the simulation will complete. So, um, you know, take your time, um, learn, Kind of what throws errors on these objects if you just do really sensible things uh, you should be you should be fine um, but just realize that fan type can just be between zero and one condenser type can has to be between zero and one coil speed can be, be between zero and one so let's see here so now i've got my cooling coil i've got my fan detail plugged in and um, i've written my osm file so uh, if I want to run that simulation, I can do that right now. So a couple more things I, I'd like to show you while this is running. I've never tried actually to open up an open studio file uh, while Energy Plus is running, but I think it should be okay. So if we come down here and look at our package rooftop system with VAV, and uh, we take a look at our coil, you can see that it has a rated low speed of 3.5. It has a rated high speed high speed COP of five. So all these all these entries that we've provided have come across the fan. You can see it has a fan efficiency of 60. 60%, a pressure rise of 650, as we specified, and a motor efficiency of 89. So, you know, all this stuff is kind of making it over, which means that it's ending up in our simulation, meaning that, you know, we're able to get a, a real system um, into um, uh, parametric environments. So um, I went a little bit over, but uh, anyway, as always, uh, good luck and uh, happy. Happy simulator.